All right, so in this section, section 11.11, .11, we're going to be dealing with Taylor polynomials. So, I'm just kidding. I, I had to do this after the group me chat. Okay, so now being a little bit more serious, um, we're going to be dealing with Taylor polynomials in this section. And what Taylor polynomials are is it's basically just a portion of our Taylor series. Um, so if we think about like our S sub n's, right, these are partial sums of a series, uh, then we call uh, S sub n, right, so this right here, S sub n, is going to be the nth degree or nth order Taylor polynomial. And the notation that's commonly used uh, for a Taylor polynomial about uh, at x equals a is going to be t sub n of x, so this tells us the nth order Taylor polynomial, and it's going to be the sum from i equals 0 to n of, basically this is just our Taylor series, but we replace the n's with i's, right? So let's take something, um, let's take something like example 1. They ask us to find the first and second degree Taylor polynomial for f of x equals square root of x at x equals 4. So let's see how this is actually applied. So if I'm looking for the first degree Taylor polynomial, then what I'm looking for is t sub 1 of x. And our formula right here tells me that this is going to be the sum from i equals 0 to n, while our n value is 1, of fi of a, remember this is the ith derivative of a, over i factorial, times x minus a to the i. Okay. So this is going to be f0 of a, so just our regular f of x evaluated at a, divided by 0 factorial, times x minus a to the 0, plus, now we'll have the first derivative evaluated at a, divided by 1 factorial, times x minus a to the 1. So notice what I did here, I started at i equals 0, I plugged in 0 for all of the i's in this formula, and got this, and then I went uh, from i equals 0 to 1, plugged in 1 for all of the i's here, and got this. And then it told me I'm supposed to stop at 1, so that's where I stop. Okay, so now we actually want to evaluate these things. Well, to do this, I need to look at... Um, you know, what is f0 of a, what is f1 of a? So remember, f0 of a, that would just be f of a. And so this is going to be the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. Well, f1 of a, we need to look at f prime of x. So the derivative of square root of x, that should give us 1 over 2 square root x. And so... That means that f prime of a will be equal to 1 over 4, because that will give us 2 times square root 2. Okay, so now I can plug that in for f0 of a and f1 of a. So then I get that t sub 1 of x is equal to, so let's see, f of a was 2 over 0 factorial. Well, it's 2 divided by 1, which is 2. Now this part right here, this x minus a to the 0, Remember, anything to the 0 is going to be 1, so that's just times 1, so I don't need to write that in there. And then we'll have f1 of a, so that's f prime of a, which we know to be 1 fourth, divided by 1 factorial. So 1 fourth divided by 1 factorial will give me 1 fourth. And then times x minus a, well our a is equal to 4. So I'll have 1 fourth times x minus 4 to the first power. So this is our first degree Taylor polynomial. If I want the second degree Taylor polynomial, then I'll just take my first degree Taylor polynomial and add on the f2 of a divided by 2 factorial times x minus a squared. Uh, so here, let me go ahead and figure out what is f2 of a going to be real quick. Well, f double prime of x, that should give us 
Well, let's see, remember f prime of x, that was one half times x to the negative one half. So now we should have negative one fourth, oops, negative one fourth times one over x to the three halves. Okay, and so then f double prime of a should give us negative one fourth times, well, let's see, so this is gonna be x cubed and then uh, square root. Um, or we can square root and then cube, which I think is easier. So the square root of four is two, and then we cube it, so we get one over eight. So this will be negative one over 32. Okay, uh, so this is negative one over 32 up here. And if we're dividing by two factorial, then this will become negative one over 64. times x minus four squared. Okay, And so that'll give us our first degree Taylor polynomial and our second degree Taylor polynomial. Okay, so now here's a good question. What is the purpose of a Taylor polynomial? Why are we even talking about this stuff other than the fact that, well, it's in the syllabus. So if COVID hadn't happened last year, then we would have covered uh, what's called the linear approximation uh, of a function at a point. And what that is, is we basically, we take some function and we want to approximate that function with a straight line at some point. And so basically all we do is we just find the tangent line at that point. And it turns out that our first degree Taylor polynomial is the linear approximation at that point. Um, so our function for a linear approximation is given right here. And so we can notice that that's exactly the same as the formula for the uh, first order or first degree Taylor polynomial. Um, so if we take the degree of the Taylor polynomial and increase it, right, so if we let you know, we look at the second degree Taylor polynomial, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh degree, and so on, we're actually going to get uh, a closer and closer approximation to f of x. Uh, for an example of this, I'm going to show you what happens when we try to approximate uh, f of x equals e to the x. Um, if you're looking at the blank notes, you should be able to click here um, to go back to that video. Uh, if you don't want to go back to it in the YouTube video. If you're in the completed notes, you won't be able to click here because the formatting is not going to work. But here's an example of it. All right, now we want to find the third degree Taylor polynomial for f of x equals x e to the x at x equals two. So first I'm just gonna write down our formula for the third degree Taylor polynomial. Well, this is gonna be f of two plus f prime of two times x minus two plus, let's see, then we should have f double prime of two over two factorial Notice we do have an over one factorial right here, but dividing by one is pointless. So I'm not gonna do it. Uh, times x minus two squared, right? And this is coming from the fact that we're centering it at x equals two. Uh, and then we should have plus f triple prime of two over three factorial, which is six. Uh, I'll go ahead and write three factorial for now. And we'll have x minus two cubed. So I need to figure out what is f of two, f prime of two, f, uh, you know, all of those. So let's see, f of x is x e to the x. So then f, uh, f of two should give us two e squared. Uh, f prime of x, 
we have to do product rule here. So we should have e to the x plus x e to the x. And that will give us e squared plus 2e squared. f double prime of x will be e to the x plus e to the x plus x e to the x. And so this will give me, we could actually simplify these a little bit, right? Notice this one up here, this e squared plus 2e squared. That can be just 3e squared. And then here we'll have e squared plus e squared plus 2e squared. So that'll give me 4e squared. And then finally, we'll look at f triple prime. This is going to be e to the x plus e to the x plus e to the x plus x e to the x. And so this will give me 5e squared. Okay. So then our third degree Taylor polynomial should be, well, let's see, so we look at f of two, which is two e squared, plus, then I should have f prime of two times x minus two. So it's gonna be three e squared times x minus two. Uh, f double prime of two, which is four e squared divided by two factorial, so it'll be Four divided by two will give us two, so I have two e squared times x minus two squared. Uh, and then we'll have five e squared over three factorial, which is six times x minus two cubed. Uh, so maybe I'll actually go ahead and write all of this in blue so it's not just like suddenly changing colors for no reason. And so this would be our third degree Taylor polynomial right here. Okay, now let's move on to a, a more complicated example, or what appears to be more complicated, of the uh, eighth degree or eighth order Taylor polynomial for this complicated looking f of x function. On something that looks really nasty like this, where we don't want to calculate eight derivatives of this, right? This sounds like a horrible time for everybody. We're going to use a trick here, which is we're going to use uh, the Maclaurin series, series for e to the x, right? And we know that this is going to be equal to Let's see, we should have the sum from n equals zero to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. And so then that tells me that f of x must be equal to x squared times the sum from n equals zero to infinity. And now I'm going to replace this x right here Right? Since we don't have e to the x, we have e to the negative 2x cubed. I'm going to replace this with a negative 2x cubed. So we'll have negative 2x cubed to the n over n factorial. So this will give me x squared times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. Of, so let's see, we should have this negative 2 to the n. All right, this is going to be negative 2 to the n times x cubed to the n over n factorial. Well, this x cubed to the n, that's just x to the 3n. And now if I multiply out the x squared, we'll have the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 2 to the n, x to the 3n plus 2 over n factorial, All right? So now here's what we have to be careful of. In our Taylor uh, polynomial formula, right? If I said that I want t sub eight of x, you would maybe think, okay, well maybe I'm supposed to replace this infinity with an eight and just go to there. However, that's not what it's saying. 
Remember, the Maclaurin series is just a special case of the Taylor series. So if I write this thing out, um, let's see, if we write this out, if I start at n equals 0, we would have negative 2 to the 0, which is 1, uh, x squared over 0 factorial. So this would just be x squared. Now if I plug in n equals 1, I'm going to get... Let's see, we should have, if we're plugging in n equals 1, we'll have negative 2 to the 1. So I'll just be negative 2 times x to the, let's see, that'd be x to the 5th over 1 factorial. So that's just 1. If I plug in n equals 2, I'll get negative 2 squared. So that's 4 x to the 8th over 2 factorial, which is 2. So this is going to be 4 divided by 2, which will give me 2. Uh, and then if I plug in 3, we'll get negative 2 cubed. So this is going to be negative 8 x to the 11th over 3 factorial, so divided by 6, and so on. That's what this f of x is equal to. Well, if I'm looking for the 8th degree or 8th order Taylor polynomial, I just want to go up, I just want to cover the part of this series that goes up to degree 8. So that means that I'll include the x squared, I'll include the x to the 5th, and I'll include the x to the 8th. But I'm not interested in anything after it because I just want an 8th degree polynomial. Similarly, if I was, say, interested in the 9th degree Taylor polynomial, it would still be the same thing. Because there are powers in here, right? There's a 0x to the 9th, 0x to the 10th, right? But those are just 0. So it turns out that the 9th and 10th degree Taylor polynomial here will be the same as the 8th degree. So just to recap, the 8th degree Taylor polynomial of this function would be x squared minus 2x to the 5th plus 2x to the 8th. Okay, now let's move on to example four. Example four is going to be another case of, I notice we're looking at a seventh degree Taylor polynomial right here. I really don't want to calculate seven derivatives of this. It's going to get nasty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the McLaurin series, or sorry, uh, our power series, right? Which we know is going to be a Taylor series. So we can write f of x is equal to x times 1 over 1 plus 5x cubed. So this is going to be x times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 5x cubed to the n, which is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 5 to the n times x to the 3n plus 1. So if I start writing it, this out, this is equal to, right, looking at this series right here. If I plug in n equals 0, we would get x. If I plug in n equals 1, we'd get negative 5 to the 1 times x to the 4th. Plus, then we'll plug in n equals 2, so I'll get 25 times x to the 7th, plus, now I don't need to go any further because I'm only interested in up to the 7th degree Taylor polynomial. So first, let's check it out. t sub 1, this is the first degree Taylor polynomial, so we only need to go up to an exponent of 1. So this will just be x. t sub 4 we only need to go up to an exponent of 4. So this will give me negative 5x to the 4th. t sub 5, we only need to go up to an exponent of 5. Well, notice the exponent of 5 would lie in here, and there would be a 0x to the 5th. So this is just going to be the same thing as the 4th degree Taylor polynomial. And then... For t sub 7, we should go up to a degree of 7. So we'll get x minus 5x to the 4th plus 25x to the 7th. And notice, right, 
this will be equivalent to our Taylor polynomial. So we don't need to divide, right? I don't need to divide this by one factorial. I don't need to divide this by two factorial. Do not do that, right? Once you have your Maclaurin series, you don't need to do anything to adjust it. Okay. Now let's look at example five. For example five, we're asked to find the third degree Taylor polynomial about a equals two, given this f of x function. So what I'm going to do here, the first thing I'm going to do, I know I need the first, second, and third de uh, derivatives evaluated at a. So let's first off look at f of a. So f of a This would be equal to 52. Sorry, we're looking at f of 2. f prime of 2. This should give you, and I'll give you a chance to practice these, this should give you 47. f double prime of 2, right? So you take the second derivative of f of x and then plug in 2. This should give you 32. And then for the third derivative evaluated at f at 2, you should get 12. And so then remember that the third degree Taylor polynomial should be f of 2 plus f prime of 2 times x minus 2 plus f double prime of 2 over 2 factorial times x minus 2 squared plus the third derivative evaluated at 2 divided by 3 factorial times x minus 2 cubed. So then this should be t sub 3 equals 52 plus 47 x minus 2 plus then we'll have 32 divided by 2 so that'll give us 16 x minus 2 squared plus, and I should have 12 divided by 3 factorial. Well, 3 factorial is 6, so 12 divided by 6 will give me 2 times x minus 2 cubed. And so that will give us our third degree Taylor polynomial for this function. All right, so the question is when do we use Maclaurin series and when do we do this method? Um, and my answer to that is if you are okay with taking the number of derivatives that they're asking for and you're okay with taking the derivative of the function given, then do this method, right? For me, there's nothing incredibly difficult going on taking a derivative here, right? It's just power rule. Um, however, when I look at taking the derivative of something like this, I have like flashback to nasty derivatives from 151 and I don't want to do that, okay? I hope you have a great day, and there will be another video that you'll need to watch for Wednesday's class activity.